with Angela Keaton of Antiwar.com. It's a pleasure. Oh, pleasure to meet you, Kyle. Fantastic. Well, not fantastic is the fact that it seems like after over a decade we might be going back to war with Iraq or at least sending troops back. It just seems ridiculous to people like us, but I just, I don't know how, why is it that people are ready to go back to war so quickly even though they were tired of it, it seems like, just months ago? Man has fallen, Kyle. Human beings are fallen, degenerate, moralist, uh, anti-moralist creatures. That's the only thing I can really say, honestly. We've been at war, I, I, I'm going to guess, we've been at war with Iraq maybe your entire life at this point. Go back to 1991, right? I This is utterly unconscionable, but what I want to say is that libertarians, and specifically people like Ron Paul and Scott Horton, must have been soothsayers because exactly what happened in Iraq has happened. The most horrible things have happened. We've delivered the worst possible victories to the worst people in Iran for it, and now the worst nightmares that every right-winger has thought, oh my God, the Muslim Caliphate. Well, now you have it. Great job, America. It's really, it's really disgraceful and horrible. But I really do think, though, there's a moral and ethical issue. America, really, North America, the U.S. We really do have to have some kind of moral reckoning about what it means. I, you know, I, I'm probably as different as Pat Buchanan as one could imagine. But when I think about, you know, republic, not an empire, thinking about what that means morally and ethically. I mean, what possible right do we have? Do, 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 do we Americans, because we're all paying for this nonsense, have a right to go over? We're, dict you know, we're overthrowing dictators. We're funding the worst military dictatorships. We've we've occupied. We've tortured. We've absolutely created enemies with most of the Muslim world, which was not the case, by the way, more than 50 years ago. That was never. It was, it was never a Christian versus Muslim war in the 1950s. We've literally created every kind of religious cultural problem, as well as you know, we've ginned up a whole kind of racist that's perfectly acceptable, that dehumanizes, and I, to me it's utterly incompatible with the values that the average American claims to hold. So I, this is real, I mean, this is not just a political issue. I mean, we're here at Freedom Fest today talking about these things, but these are really moral and ethical issues that people have sure. to wrestle with. We're talking about human lives. Sure. I mean, definitely from a moral and ethical standpoint, but even from a consequentialist standpoint, I mean, what we have done effectively is taken secular dictatorships in the Middle East and turned them into uh, theological dictatorships. Well, Iraq, I mean, Saddam Hussein was a, was a monster in many ways. However, he was a, a secular, moderate Muslim. Women were certainly not oppressed to the degree that we usually stereotype people in those regions of the world. It was a functioning country with amazing, with, with good infrastructure. I mean, they had hospitals and roads, and, and people were going about their lives in Iraq before we came in and destroyed that. And it's absolutely horrible. It's absolutely unconscionable. It's unconscionable what we do with sanctions with Iraq that have killed uncold children and just literally have destroyed, it destroyed Iraqi society for no reason whatsoever. We never had a quarrel with the Iraqi people. Saddam Hussein got fired from being um, one of the U.S. puppets. He wasn't a, a per perfectly good puppet that week. And let's be honest, I mean, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about these manipulations of the U.S. government that had horrible, horrible consequences for these people, horrible consequences particularly for women and children now in these countries. There's no going back. You can't undo what we've done there. What, what happened in Iraq is absolutely, I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the war crime of the century. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you can put it any better. That's unfortunate, but true. When I look around uh, here at Freedom Fest, and I don't know if you notice the same thing, there are groups like Liberty.me and Antiwar.com and a lot of young people that are excited and, and people who are, you know, through every generation, excited about doing things to, to end war, to create prosperity for people all over the world. I mean, are you, are you encouraged by this? Are you encouraged by the kinds of innovation that you see at something like Freedom Fest? Well, you know, I mean, honestly, your average young American for Liberty or Students for Liberty member doesn't need to be sold on this. He or she gets that already. I mean, Ron, what Ron Paul has done is created a really sensible anti-war movement of normal suit and tied people. We're not a bunch of hippies. We're not a bunch of commies. We're normal people. We're regular Americans who are against war. And that should be an American value. That really should be when we talk, when things that, you know, the very few things that tie Americans together, like, you know, the Constitution or what it means to be a patriot, it's peace is patriotic. Being that republic, minding our own business, free trade with all. And really, I mean, this is something at Freedom Fest that we can maybe sell our issue better on, free trade. 
if you're trading with people, you're not going to kill them. You're not going to kill your trading partners. You want to create wealth for each other and you're going to learn mutual respect and you're going to learn to travel and you're going to have a broader perspective where you realize, oh, people in other places, those squiggles on the map are just people like me, people who love their families, they like having a house, they have career ambitions, they have hobbies just like you and me. These are The foreigners are not strangers, they're not weird. They have different customs and traditions, but they basically are just like us. So. Well, thank you so much. It's it just it's such a pleasure to talk to you, Angela Keaton, and uh, let's do it sometime soon in the future. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Bye. Thank you.